Welcome to the how-to video for the multi-attribute assessment tool found on the Decision Strategies website. Decision Strategies consultants have an average of over 20 years experience in their respective industries. As outside facilitators, we excel at teaching teams to frame their decisions, generate clear alternatives for consideration, and rigorously test these alternatives against a world of risk and uncertainties. If you're interested in speaking directly with a Decision Strategies consultant, please contact us today www.decisionstrategies.com. At Decision Strategies, we found this tool to be a useful aid in helping diverse teams discuss the objectives that are driving their decision. It is also useful in winnowing down the number of alternatives the team intends to later evaluate in greater detail, reducing analysis effort and time spent to reach a competent decision. It is important to note that while this tool does give a numeric score to the alternatives, it is not the same as doing a rigorous economic analysis. Nor does it highlight the implications nor probabilities of the risk associated with each alternative. Alternatives that score significantly lower can often safely be eliminated from further consideration. Alternatives that score somewhat near to each other should be considered equally good candidates for detailed analysis. Let's start the how-to. If you've installed the Full Decision Strategies Toolbox, then you can start by clicking on the desktop item. Click Agree, and then click Launch New Template. Here we'll select the Multi-Attribute Assessment Tool. And if you have not installed the toolbox, you will need to open the Multi-Attribute Tool directly from wherever you have it saved to your computer. When the tool opens, we again click Agree, and we're prompted to save our file as an Excel macro-enabled workbook. I'll save this file to my desktop and name it mademo.xlsm. The file opens on the introduction page, and I'll scroll down and click the Next button. In the yellow box of step one, I will give our project a name. We'll then scroll down to step two, where I will fill out the strategies we are considering along with their brief descriptions. This tool assumes that you have already defined your strategies. If you have not, please see the strategy table tool available for free download on the Decision Strategies website. In our example, we are going to say we already came up with the strategies of go big, which we'll say is big everything, no costs spared, post to home, which we define as aggressively pursue the domestic market and so on with our other strategies we call cautious traveler and the status quo. We then proceed to the criteria definition page by clicking on the next button. Here we list out the criteria by which we will judge our different alternatives. Often these are the fundamental objectives defined through the use of the issue raising and decision hierarchy tool, which is also available for free download on the decision strategies website. For this example, our criteria are low capex, low opex, high market share, high customer satisfaction, and brand image improvement. Now we scroll down to step four. Where we will define the range of possible outcomes for each criterion. Higher scores relate to more desirable outcomes and low scores relate to undesirable outcomes. For our example, for low capex, we might say that if we were to look back on our project and it ended up costing us less than $30 million, we'd be quite pleased. That might garner a score of nine or 10. A score of six or eight might be more in the ballpark of 30 million to 60 million dollars. If 
three to five might be around 60 million to 90 million dollars. And a score of zero to two might be somewhere over $90 million. In the interest of time, I will go ahead and fill in the rest of our example score definitions. Scrolling down to step five. We begin to comparatively assess the importance of each of our criteria. When facilitating a team through this exercise, you will often find that this step clearly highlights the differing opinions amongst team members, often driven by the disciplines which they represent within your company. It is important that everyone on the team align on the objectives you will try to achieve through the project and come to a mutual understanding. For our example, I will say that between having low capex and low operating cost, we would prefer to have the low capex. And we would prefer this by a moderate amount. When comparing low capex versus high market share, I would say that we would prefer to have the high market share, and again, by a moderate degree. Between keeping our capital costs low and having high customer satisfaction, our company would prefer low capital cost, and again, a moderate difference. In inches of time, I will again fill out the rest of the comparisons and then scroll down and then click the check logic update weights button to ensure that I don't have any logical flaws in my pairwise comparisons. I see that I don't. I click OK and can then see the relative weightings of my criteria. In our example, you can say our preference is to have high market share and our secondary objective is low capital cost. This is followed by low OPEX, high customer satisfaction, and brand image improvement. We can then click the next button and proceed to the scoring page. We scroll down to step seven where we must now score how we think each strategy, if enacted, will perform in regards to each of the criteria. For example, we may say that if we go forward with our go big strategy, our gut feel is that it will be quite expensive, somewhere around a three on our previously defined scoring range. OPEX may prove to be high as well, a five, but we think it will likely reward us with more market share, something in the eight range. Customer satisfaction will probably be a seven. And we think that it will be good for our brand image and so that will likely score a seven as well. We then go through the remaining strategy choosing a similar thought process and gauge how well each would likely perform in regards to our criteria. Note, when doing this exercise as a team, different members may have very different views on how well each strategy will perform. Here, great insight can be had by identifying the discrepancies and talking through why the opposing members pick their respective scores. Once the team has talked through the differences, you'll need to pick a final score to enter on the sheet. Sometimes this is the average, sometimes it's the median, and other times it's just the score of the one individual on the team that the rest believe to be the most informed on the particular subject. We can now scroll down and see the results. The status quo alternative has the highest score, but this doesn't mean that we should automatically go forward with this strategy. We see that our cautious traveler strategy also scored well, and somewhat lower is the go big strategy. So what does the tool tell us? The results show which strategy the team believes will best meet a higher number of their more important criteria, given a relatively certain future environment. Along the way, the tool helped the team to clarify their strategic choices under consideration and come to agreement upon the criteria by which each strategy would be judged. The team then held a valuable conversation in which they discussed how each strategy may perform in regard to the criteria 
and were able to surface and talk through the reasoning behind any possible misalignment of team member opinion. Often this thought process is of just the right rigor for many of the low impact, low uncertain decisions organizations face. So what is the next level? When the stakes are higher or uncertainty is more complex, decision strategy strongly recommends a fully probabilistic model customized to accurately reflect the environment in which the decisions will be made. These models fully test each strategy against all uncertainties and show the values that results from choosing each strategy under all possible scenarios. The probabilistic models also show which uncertainties have the greatest impact on the resulting value, allowing teams to optimize their leading strategy to further minimize downside risk and maximize upside potential. In our example, we would likely recommend moving forward with a more detailed analysis effort for our leading three alternatives and drop the close to home strategy from consideration. Thank you for watching the how to video and please don't hesitate to contact us at www.decisionstrategies.com.